So hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to uh, introduce, well, more than introduce PixApp. I think many of you have already heard me speak about what we're doing in our pilot line. And actually, I think PixApp is a good example of we're running for just over four years now. We have a small extension in our project, but really a critical part of that is um, the sustainability. And we have got a pretty good sustainability program. Um, and part of that is uh, I, I show here the Photon Hub link because Photon Hub has given an extra impetus to many of the pilot lines and many researchers across Europe. So it's another um, opportunity for, for pilot lines in particular to kind of extend their, their sustainability model. Um, so what I want to talk about is not just the services that we offer in PixApp, because as I say, we've been running for a number of years now and we're pretty well established and we know what we're doing and we have a model, an operation model um, in that. And I want to talk a little bit about that and you know, maybe uh, understand how it works and, and some of the issues that you face. Um, so uh, as, 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 as with all the uh, discussions today, uh, we're grateful for funding on the Horizon 2020 program. Um, and one of the challenges in setting up the pilot line um, uh, from day one was that uh, the packaging is very, very important. It typically can account, and that's actually, this is a true figure, for well over 50% of the manufacturing cost, up to 80%. Now it goes down with volume, but we tend to see that kind of number borne out when, we, when, we're, when we're involved in projects. Um, and an important point about the pilot line, it's not just one location at Tyndall, it's distributed across quite a few partners. Uh, now, most of these partners are, you know, uh, obviously within Europe, but some of them are um, application partners where we're validating processes. So the core team um, would be a number of a number of assembly equipment test uh, partners as well. So we've also included some test aspects in our pilot line. Um, now what's really important to say is that uh, we're primarily uh, focused around supporting our European companies, but what's very important is that we we have a global reach, and I think one of the benefits there is we bring advanced manufacturing into Europe, consolidate it. Um, so there are many uh, companies we work with outside Europe. Now we do have programs, we call them pre-commercial programs, where we do give supports to European companies. But um, Integrate Photonics is a global business and we would neglect that huge opportunity from a European um, you know, perspective if we didn't engage uh, with companies outside Europe. So what we're showing is the opportunity to, to bring in a very advanced and consolidate and embed very advanced manufacturing, in this case packaging, and support our partners in, you know, Kevin's talking about Jepix and there's other pilot lines in, in silicon photonics and um, uh, silicon nitride. So uh, supporting those um, and then the application companies, that's very important. Um, and bringing it into Europe is important, for, especially for some of our partners. So I'll just pick out two partners here. So one is uh, Photon First, formerly Technobiz, who you may know of in the Netherlands. And they've established a manufacturing capability. They make their own integrated photonic products and do a great job of that. But they're all support, supporting manufacturing packaging services. And uh, we work with them and uh, they scale up. So we do a lot of the development work. So we've got a pretty nice uh, kind, of, uh, kind of model uh, where we develop a lot of the processes, the building blocks, as Antonio mentioned at the start, um, and then transfer it uh, to our partners for scale up. And they become sustainable. So um, sustainability for a pilot line is, is important, but sustainability for our, our businesses, our industry partners is really, really important. Uh, another, another example is Ficon Tech, who build packaging machines and test equipment. So for example, in the, in the top image you see with Photon First, they're actually buying uh, uh, Ficon Tech systems. So it's a very nice kind of uh, integrated kind of ecosystem from a European perspective. And that's why you know, we need to look at business outside Europe and support companies in Europe to, to, to go global in this global market. So to make things easier, because integrated photonics is a very complex technology, we have a single point, we call it our gateway here in Cork. Um, we have an office at Tyndall and staffed by technical and program managers. Um, and essentially, it's a single point of contact um, where you can contact us and we basically explain what we offer. And then we engage with our partners across Europe to fulfill those requirements, be they from a European or a non-European um, industry uh, uh, group. 
And as I said at the start, we're looking at moving from prototypes to early stage manufacturing. And then the onus, in a sense, is on our industrial partners to kind of run with that. So the purpose of a pilot line is not to get in the way of our industrial partners or European partners. They will take the early stage opportunity, the pilot scale opportunity, and run with that and build our business. So um, another important point is, and the European Commission like this, is to get regional investment. So we, we um, in the last two years, have got quite a bit of support from the Irish government uh, to, to work uh, to build a, a more dedicated facility for early stage uh, manufacturing. So here you can see early, or sorry, late last year, um, we, we started to kit out a new facility and uh, that's, that's being kitted out with new equipment. And what's great here is Ficon Tech have set up an R&D kind of process development facility in our team here in, in Tyndall and we're, we're installing you know state-of-the-art machines and the plan is um, that co companies can come in evaluate these machines if they want to buy them but also evaluate processes so really support our European partners so they can come and visit us in Cork and uh, learn the scale of processes that we're developing because we do need more industrial companies to take on packaging because the volumes are really really growing so that, that's, that's a bottleneck that we need to address. So as I said, our gateway helps uh, enable people to understand the complexities of packaging. And I think one thing we've learned, for example, working with Hugo and his team at ACFAST, we tend to preach to the converters. We tend to speak to the photonics people who really know what they're talking about. But there's a lot of new markets in areas like medical devices and sensors and, and other areas. Um, where companies would benefit a lot from photonics, but don't really understand it. So to reduce the barrier, we've started to make these simplified menus, building blocks, and uh, standardize those. And it really works well when we got this distributed network of partners, we start to standardize things. And, and that really also has another factor, another effect, where we start to work down with global groups and build global standards. So there's a consortium in the US called AIM Photonics, a very large consortium, and we've been working with them to develop packaging standards that become more globalized. And the great thing is, if we're in on the ground floor, we can start to influence those and make sure you know, they're, they're developed towards the kind, of, the kind of technologies that we like and we feel are, are, are justifiable for manufacturing. Now, um, as I said, standards are important and design rules are a very important part of that. So if you go to a foundry, typically you'll have a PDK, a process design kit. Basically, you follow that. It's, it's a very standardized menu of what's available. And um, it really kind of helps formalize how you lay out a chip. So you're not basically kind of for the first time going into a foundry with all its complexities and, and wondering if what you're going to make works well. These are, these are well-defined building blocks on a chip. So what we've done is something similar to, for the packaging side. We've started to develop building blocks. We call them ADKs, not to complicate the PDK, assembly design kits. And we've got standardized packaging building blocks. So those building blocks I mentioned. And started to, you know, one of our partners is Synopsys. So they developed this design software. It's called Optum Designer. There are others like Lucida and uh, Cadence, for example. But uh, with these ADKs, they, they, can, be, they can be brought into, into the um, software tools. And much like the PDK, where you've got building blocks, um, you can have packaging building blocks or ADKs. So we've standardized those, as you see on the right side, we've got different things like fiber attach, micro optics with Vanguard Photonics, flip chip, uh, different types of wire bonding, and even uh, more advanced processes like laser integration, hybrid laser integration. So that this kind of process originated from when we were originally kind of looking at packaging, we developed our own kind of documentation around design rules for silica photonics because it was really so complex. But as I said, within our pilot line, we've introduced those into a software tool and it's helped us and helped users uh, really kind of like simplify the design process. So for example, this is a biomedical application. So you could imagine somebody working at biomedical devices or sensors, maybe not an expert in integrated photonics or even in photonics, but with the menu driven type software, you can lay out your biochip. So here you can see an actual demonstrator biochip we made. Uh, this is in silicon nitride. It's spotted. So actually one of our application partners is a company called Randox. They're, they're very busy at the moment making COVID detection kits. So um, they worked with us to use protocols for biosensing in their standardized non-integrated photonic technologies and use those chemical protocols or biospotting protocols for these chips. 
And uh, as a result, we're able to develop a kind of a standardized building block for biosensors, which is basically manufacturing proof now at early stage, at least in pro uh, pilot scale production. And we have partners in our pilot line who can manufacture those. So I mentioned biosensors. We also have data communication modules. And what we've done here is uh, develop these uh, examples. So these would be uh, demonstrators. We call them project demonstrators. Uh, sorry, this isn't playing very well. But you can see the electronics. There's photonic chip is at the center. I'll, I'll go into that in a little bit of detail. And the biosensing chips with fluidics. And again, these all follow those design rules that I, I mentioned earlier on. So it's not it's not good enough just to offer a service and, and people come in and, and kind of have to work through that themselves. You have to be able to offer a very standardized um, menu, if you will, um, a software-driven menu, and also have a gateway. So it encourages those people who are new to this area and potentially have a winner, a mass market application. So this is a little bit of a close-up on one of our demonstrators. And again, you can see the uh, the PDK layout from the from the photonic chip coming out of IMEC. Um, and then there's different aspects, uh, the, the ORF. Uh, this was done with our partners in VTT in Finland. But again, you can see other features here, like the flip chip of electronics. We have a laser, uh, micro-optics for pluggable connections, and, and the whole electrical uh, connection uh, type uh, or ORF, which is complex in itself. So these are all standard now, we can offer these. Um, and we do have different types of packages. We also have open, simple, simplified prototype packages, which are very much uh, geared towards just early stage testing. And then you invest in a more advanced kind of a hermetic type package. And we have, we have developed those as well. So just going back to uh, one thing that's become very, very interesting for us is we originally developed what we call reference chips or proxy chips. And essentially these are, because one of the problems when you're working on a, a, a kind of a, a packaging heavy project, you need lots of different types of photonic and electronic chips to validate your processes, but you don't want to use these very valuable product chips. So what we developed over the last number of years is what we call reference or proxy chips. And these incorporate all the different types of optical and electrical IOs that you would use in testing your packaging process. So different types of edge couplers, grading couplers, um, uh, flip chip type uh, bond pads uh, for wire bonding as well, and a whole array of other 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 types of components. And they were used in our project uh, to validate the processes or those building blocks we developed. But actually what we found over the last year or so, companies are very interested in getting their hands on these chips because it enables them to be able to set up their packaging processes. So for example, um, if you're a new entrant into the packaging world, um, you, you need lots of chips but your, your customer can't give them to you for, for confidentiality or they're just not available, which is actually quite common. Uh, we have lots of those reference chips, so we can give them out to people to validate a process. And one nice example here now is that Ficom Tech, one of our partners, are using these chips to, to validate installs at customer sites. So I think this is a very nice example. And more recently, what we started to develop is what we call electronic reference chips, because there's a, there's a growing market in what we call co-packaging, so co-packaging of electronic and photonic devices in, 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 in a package. So we need also ORF and thermal electronic chips that proxy what, basically what a, what a driver or a modulator driver or an amplifier chip would do, but you don't need the actual chip. You just need those packaging required functions. So these types of proxy or reference chips are proving very effective and it's a nice spin-off activity from our pilot line. So the final thing I'd like to say is um, we also had a very successful or have a very successful uh, hands-on training course at Tyndall where we bring people in and give them uh, hands-on training. It's typically over a week. Um, and more recently, we've developed a VR program where we use Oculus headsets uh, to uh, really give a, an amazing virtual kind of training activity. So if people are interested, there's an actual uh, YouTube video where you can see uh, Kind of this 3D packaging of uh, fiber packaging of lasers, but we're developing it up uh, for, for a whole array of packaging uh, uh, processes that are developed within our labs. And finally, I want to give a shout out to Fold on Hope because that's really reviving or not reviving, but giving us more, uh, you know, another boost. So the training programs we're developing and um, we've developed it in PixApp, we're bringing it out to Fold on Hub and many other partners. Hugo mentioned about the demo and experience centers. 
So that's something that's really exciting and adds to the sustainability of our pilot line and many other pilot lines. So um, it's a great it's a great way to show the uh, the linking between all of these European projects and how we work together to to make sustainability a, a, a real thing. So I'd just like to leave it at that and open it for any questions. Uh, finally, just obviously I'd like to thank the European Commission and uh, Photonics 21 for their guidance and, and their financial support. So thanks very much. Thank you so much, Peter. It's very interesting, your presentation. And uh, it's a really amazing. Uh, I was really impressed that, that you are using uh, Oculus, so Photonics device to train on Photonics. So that's great. Uh, really a great uh, cooperation between technologies. Here I have a question uh, coming. Uh, how you see the the future uh, about standardization, especially uh, between uh, your work, the great work of PixUp, and uh, the machine building, the automation? Uh, because I think that this is an irrelevant block. Hmm. Yeah. So, so your question is, what's how yes. how is standardization yeah, progressing? Yeah. What you see yeah. as a next step, for example to integrate the standardization discussion also with the company uh, providing automation system for the Absolutely. packaging. Absolutely, no, that's a very good point because, okay, so standardization, always the question is when do you standardize? Uh, you don't want to do it too early because things are still in, in flux. But I think we're getting to the point where we can start to look at it. Maybe two or three years ago was quite early. So we are starting to do that. I think a key is we can't just do it in Europe. We have to work with our global partners. So. We are already doing that. We have good collaborations with some partners. For example, I mentioned AIM, and we're working together towards development of standards. We have to do that together. But regarding automation and equipment, what we clearly find is from a manufacturing perspective, the design rules must take account of the machine. So for example, things like pickup tools, uh, vision systems, how you orientate chips in the package, the machine can, needs to see these for automation. So how you how you lay out the package, how you lay out even the pick, uh, really will influence the machine. Um, other factors like do you put all the fibers on one side of the chip, uh, or do you put them in? People generally like to put fibers on inputs and outputs on separate sides. That means then you need two alignment arms, uh, adding to expense. Uh, so these kind of factors are very very important. And then you have materials, things like UV cure epoxies, very commonly used. Um, but one of the big problems we see is reflow compatibility because most of these components go into a reflow furnace. That's a standard assembly process for board level assembly. They must withstand 260. There's not many, not many epoxies that are withstanding this. So it's not just standardization of the package, it's standardization of the equipment and standardization of the materials. So there's a lot of exciting work to be done. Great, great. And uh, what about uh, the potential user of this technology? Clearly, telecom is uh, the biggest uh, user of this technology, but which are the other markets where uh, we can uh, look for future application and more application of PIX? Oh, well, so it's already happening. So um, I would say that we see, starting to see, no, no question about it. Uh, so we, we tend to see Europe and the US 50-50, um, just from a geographical perspective. We tend to see the majority are SMEs, uh, but we start. We are also seeing large-scale companies who are buying some of these SMEs, smaller startups, and bringing them in. So even for the large companies, they're like a startup. They're they're thinking like this. Generally, the markets we see are obviously telecoms, but that's changing. We're starting to see biomedical. We're starting to see display things like uh, you know virtual reality type systems, things like that. Uh, we're also seeing uh, sensing lidar. Uh, so these are these are these are common, you know. So definitely, uh, new markets are opening up besides telecom. I think telecom was at the at the forefront of this. Um, but uh, as I said, really, what we've learned from some of our partners like Actfast, we have to be a little bit more sympathetic to the non-photonics people and make the offering a little bit more understandable and approachable. So that's that's really paying dividends now. 